as an example of what we have, oral questions. <laughs> Leader of the official opposition. Well, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. Yesterday, another red flag was raised by the, uh, for the taxpayers in New Brunswick. Our Auditor General stated that the provincial government's math is incredible and its 2014-2015 deficit figure isn't accurate. Now, I know, Mr. Speaker, that uh, math is not a strong point for the Premier. Uh, it goes back to even during the election when uh, the famous uh, uh, CBC interview with Harry Forstell where Harry corrected the Premier's math uh, on TV and the Premier had to do a do-over. But I, I think we've learned that the only thing the Premier finds harder than math is that admitting that he's wrong. So uh, we want to ask today, we won't ask him if he's, if he's been wrong on the numbers, but we'll ask him in another way. If he, the Premier would like to start off by admitting that the Auditor General is right when she says the deficit figures are inaccurate. The Honourable Minister of Finance. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, um, in response to the question, you know, the audited financials that we presented um, reflects the state uh, the financial situation of our province. We've accounted for what was expensed during that fiscal year, and we've accounted based on the recommendations of the controller of the province of New Brunswick. And that office of the controller has the expertise, has the knowledge, and applying best practices from an accounting perspective. And Mr. Speaker, I'm very comfortable with the audited financial and the fact that the only element that the Auditor General qualified is the accounting of the uh, pension regime that was converted, o converted over to the, uh, uh, the um, uh, shared risk. That's the only element in the financial statements that was qualified. The rest of the audited financial passed uh, the Auditor General's. Leader of the official opposition. Mr. Speaker, the people of the province are, of New Brunswick are not so naive that they would believe what the Minister of Finance has just said. And stating that the qualified books are just one part of it, it's uh, like saying the Watergate, Watergate was simply a disagreement on the room numbers. But Mr. Speaker, when the Auditor General, Auditor General qualifies your books, the books remain qualified until that disagreement is corrected. So the, the Premier faces the future of having qualified financial statements every year for the next three years, the remainder of his mandate, unless they can clear up this disagreement right now. Mr. Speaker, again, we wonder why the Premier is letting this sit. And I know that they want to be open and transparent, but having qualified books every year means that they're not being open and, and transparent. So will. Will the Premier commit to fixing this problem now so he doesn't have to face qualified books for the rest of his mandate? The Honourable Minister of Finance. Mr. Speaker, let's um, clarify a thing. The only element of the uh, financial statements that was qualified is the accounting of the shared risk pension regime. And all of the rest of the financial statement uh, got, uh, got uh, good audited financials. I will remind the opposition and New Brunswickers that there's three other uh, jurisdictions, two in New Brunswick uh, and one in Nova Scotia that uh, qualified, didn't, qual didn't qual account for this new regime as a defined contribution. The city of Fredericton, the city of St. John and the province of Nova Scotia. This is not unique, Mr. Speaker. It's not unique and what we've done, we've actually accounted for the long-term liability of this, uh, of this regime. It's been accounted for, and the office of the controller's office recommended this to us, and government accepted the recommendation. Leader of the official opposition. Mr. Speaker, once again, the Minister of Finance is trying to talk his way out of a bad situation. He faces the first time in history of a government having qualified financial statements for the duration of their mandate. Mr. Speaker, he knows, and he can ask the, uh, the uh, member uh, across the cabinet table, that they would not lend money to a, a business that had qualified financial statements. So he's saying that it's okay for them to have qualified statements, but we won't help companies that, don't have, that do have qualified statements. So we're, we're again, we're asking the Premier for his own sake of credibility for his finance minister, himself, his government, and his cabinet. Will he make the commitment today to work with the Auditor General and the Controller 
and the other uh, ministers to correct this inaccurate information that they portray day after day after day. Will you do, make that commitment today? The Honourable Minister of Finance. Mr. Speaker, we take seriously uh, that uh, our financial uh, statements reflects the expenditure of government. And we take very seriously that those financial statements reflect the, uh, the state of, of our financials. Um, the controller's office recommended that we accounted for this way. And so we've accounted one element which qualified the statements only one element, which is the accounting of the pension uh, regime that became a shared risk pension plan. So we've accounted as a defined contribution. And that's how it was recommended to be done. And we've accepted this. There's three other places in the Maritimes that have accounted for it this way. We believe, based on the recommendation of the controller's office, that all expenditures was accounted for in the audited financial. That's the facts, Mr. Speaker. Leader of the official opposition. Oh, Mr. Speaker, I'll tell you what the facts are. The facts of the matter that every time this government, these ministers, the Premier gets up and talks about financial figures here in the province of New Brunswick, they have no credibility. They have no credibility because the Auditor General would not sign off on their financial statements. That's a serious matter. So every time they talk to the bond raiders, every time they talk to business owners across the province, every time they try to get business here in the province of New Brunswick, those people will know these guys have incorrect numbers that they're toting around the globe. Mr. Speaker, it's a serious enough matter that we feel the Premier should take the leadership role on this and commit today that he'll correct the numbers, get agreement across all fronts so we won't have qualified statements, not just on their first, but their second, third and fourth. And I'll tell you, Mr. Speaker, that'll be historic when this Finance Minister has all his statements qualified for the duration of his tenure. Commit today, make the correction so we'll gain back some credibility. The Honour Honourable Minister of Finance. No. The, chef de uh, the Leader of the Opposition is saying all sorts of things that are not factual. The credit agencies did not show concern. The credit agencies did not express concern with regard to our financial statements, our audited financial statements. The Office of the Controller of New Brunswick, which is a credible office, with, a, great, with a, a good reputation, recommended that we take into account the, the expenditures in the way that we did for one element only, which is the conversion of the, the pension to a shared risk pension. So the facts are on the table. We are going to uh, take to account for all expenses for that year, and we're, we're comfortable with our financial statements. Well, Mr. Speaker, I'll give you a couple of more facts on another topic and let the record show that we warned the Premier about having uh, audited uh, qualified financial statements. But we know that there are some facts out there. We know the fact that the present Minister of Health uh, lent a substantial amount of money to a company who, uh, whose future was in jeopardy. And Mr. Speaker, we know that the uh, Minister of, of Health uh, allowed uh, money to go to ATCON when they knew that the Dato Bridge project was in trouble. Now, we've had a lot of uh, interesting talk lately, but we know that the Gallant government feels that police officers should be suspended without pay when an investigation is going on. So doesn't it stand to reason that the Premier should suspend the Health Minister until the Auditor General has completed the investigation of ADCON? It makes logical sense that this should be done based on the principles that this government has been toting for the last year. So will the Premier ask the Minister of Health to stand down? The Honourable, Honourable Minister of Finance. Mr. Speaker, um, this file now has been bringing uh, to the legislator's attention for the last 12 months. It is a file where it's been, it's happened seven years ago. And over the last, over the last seven years, there's been two important reports and analysis done. One by the Conflict of Interest Commissioner and one by the Auditor General. The Auditor General, when she did her report, came in with some very solid recommendations, very serious recommendations. And guess what, Mr. Speaker? We've implemented those recommendations as a government. We've implemented those recommendations because it was improving process and decision-making. We've actually made... 
We've actually made an amendment to the legislation to incorporate those recommendations. Now, if the Auditor General feels that she wants to do more assessment on that file, we'll fully cooperate. But she has a budget, and she will have to work within that budget. Leader of official opposition. <laughs> well, there's qualified support if I've ever seen it. <laughs> Mr. Speaker. Asking the uh, health minister to step aside where this investigation goes on makes sense, and I'll tell you why. The, uh, the conflict interest commissioner did do a, a huge investigation, and the, the premier of the day was found guilty. Sean Graham was found guilty of a conflict of interest. Historically, first time ever happened, Mr. Speaker. That's why, again, looking at the credibility of this government, they need to try and gain back some of the credibility they've lost. And, and you look at the minister of health. He overruled his staff when he gave the money to ADCON. But he, he sides with his staff um, when, when you look at the request for drugs for Morgan Doucette. He set Dr. Cleary aside when there was an investigation going on. And, and again, Mr. Speaker, that's why in order to have some credibility on this file, the Premier should ask the Minister of Health to step down right now. Honorable Minister of Finance. Mr. Speaker, speaking of credibility, we have met our deficit target twice in the first year of our, of our, of our mandate. Contrary to the previous government, never met a deficit target, Mr. Speaker, over four years. We're working very hard on this side of the House. We're taking things very seriously. We want to get our fiscal house in order. We want to make sure that jobs are being created for New Brunswickers. And to do so, we need to get our fiscal situation back on track where the previous government failed. Even though they promised it, Mr. Speaker, over four years, they failed. Now they're in the opposition. I see why. We are going to keep working really hard in getting the fiscal situation of our province back on track. And we're going to make sure that all expenditures are accounted for, like we have did in our first financial statements. That's important for us. It's important for New Brunswickers. And we've got to make sure that the opposition works with the government in making sure that we send the right message to investors that can invest in our province. Leader of the official opposition. Well, Mr. Speaker, again, the, uh, the Minister of Finance is talking himself into a corner because if he wants to go out to those people and say, come invest in this province, he'll have to say, now we don't give you the right numbers, they're not accurate, and we can't get a qualified, uh, unqualified statement from the Auditor General. So our numbers are wrong, um, and Mr. Speaker, now he's going to go out to the world and say, come invest with us. Mr. Speaker, if there was a company that had qualified financial statements, this government would not be lending them money. It goes back to the credibility of this whole group. Mr. Speaker, we saw where the Minister of Health overruled his staff uh, when it came to the ACON file. We saw that he won't overrule his staff when it comes to, uh, to helping Morgan Doucette get some drugs that he needs. And Mr. Speaker, we saw that Dr. Cleary was set aside because there was an investigation going on. So it just it makes logical sense when you look also on the other file I've talked about uh, with the police. So will the Premier take the leadership role, set the Minister of Health aside until the investigation is done? Honourable Minister of Finance. No, Mr. Speaker, the opposition wants to live in the past. The reality is there's investment happening in our province. Just call BBM. They've announced a thousand jobs being created in the province of Brunswick. They believe in New Brunswick. They believe in New Brunswick, and that's also following our financial statements that was brought forward. Mr. Speaker, there was jobs created in the province of New Brunswick in the last four months. There was investment made in the province of New Brunswick. They failed to do that when they were in government. They couldn't attract investment. They couldn't set the right conditions for economic development and job creation. We're doing so, Mr. Speaker. We're doing so with a very serious agenda in regarding to job creation, getting our fiscal house in order, and accounting for all of the expenditure of government within that fiscal. Leader of the official opposition. Mr. Speaker, if BMM Test Labs had a head qualified financial statements, would the member opposite have given them any money? I think not. So he's going out with qualified financial statements, trying to get investments. So again, we're showing some inconsistency here on the government's side. And Mr. Speaker, the thousand jobs that they talk about being created, they don't start until the end of next year. So again, 
what we hear from the Minister of Finance, again, is inaccurate, just like the inaccurate numbers that he talks about every time he talks about his, his deficit. So, Mr. Speaker, once again, going back to the credibility of this government, we've seen it time and time again. A year ago, the Premier didn't want to want to talk about ACON. He wanted it swept under the rug. Now, where we see it going forward, again, we've seen that flip-flop. So, the Premier can, can again gain some credibility, ask the Minister of Health, who's responsible for this file, even if it was seven years ago, to step down. The Honourable the Premier. Mr. Speaker, I have to point something out here. This morning, the Leader of the Opposition is telling us that seven years ago, the government of the time should have listened to business New Brunswick, Mr. Speaker, but then he's telling us today that we shouldn't be listening to the controller. He's telling us we shouldn't be listening to the health department now today, uh, today in our decisions, Mr. Speaker. He's saying that we have to follow everything to a T that the AG tells us, the Auditor General, Mr. Speaker, which in fact we actually are doing and we are co cooperating with uh, her, Mr. Speaker. But then in the same breath, in the same questions he's saying, and in the same uh, question period cycle, Mr. Speaker, he's saying that we shouldn't listen to the Official Languages Commissioner. He's saying that we should doubt the credibility of the Access to Information Privacy Commissioner, Mr. Speaker. So, Really, at the end of the day, all this shows is two things, is that the Leader of the Opposition, no matter what we do, is going to criticize, Mr. Right. Speaker. He doesn't care about the future of the province. He wants to score political points. And the other thing that's certain is we know we shouldn't be listening to the Leader of the Opposition. Yeah.